In this video, we're going to learn about the comma operator in C. So typically when we see the comma used in C, it's used as a separator. In situations like declaring variables, or creating a function prototype, or initializing an array. But a comma can also be used as an operator. So situations where it's used as a separator look like this. If we said int a is equal to zero, b is equal to zero, c is equal to zero, here we're using it as a separator to declare three variables. We could use it to initialize an array by saying int array is equal to one, two, three, four, five. We could also use it to separate parameters in a function prototype. So we could say here int function, int a, int b, int c, and the function could return a plus b plus c maybe. And here we have the comma being used as a separator again. It's also used as a separator when providing arguments to a function call. So if we called the function by saying function three, four, five, and semicolon, all of these situations involve using the comma as a separator, not an operator. But it can also be used as an operator. Let's go over an example of how that works. So we'll delete these as well. So here we'll say int a is equal to one, int b is equal to two. Then we'll declare a variable c, and we'll assign to c a comma b. And the way that it works is that the comma separates expressions similar to how the semicolon separates statements. This expression will first be evaluated, but its result will be discarded. So A evaluates to one, but its result is discarded. Then the next expression will be evaluated and its result is going to be returned from this expression. So C would be assigned the value two. So if we print out C, we'll see that C is going to be set to two because B was set to two. So we'll save this and run it. And we get that C is two. Now, one thing with the comma operator is it has the lowest precedence of any operator in C. That means if we took out these brackets here, the first thing that's going to happen is this assignment here. A is going to be assigned to C and B will just evaluate to two, but it'll do nothing. So we'll save this and run it. And in this case, C gets assigned the value one, which is what A was. And that's because the assignment operator has higher precedence than the comma operator. In order to force the comma operator to happen first, we've got to put brackets around A and B here. If we do that, then the comma operator will happen first, then the assignment operator. So that's why if we save this and run it, we get C is two. So we could use an expression here that actually modifies a variable that is then used in this expression here. Let's go over an example of that. We'll say int m is equal to four. We'll also declare a variable called n. Then we'll say n is equal to m plus equals one comma m times two. Then we'll print out m and n. So we'll say m percent d, n percent d with some new lines to separate them. And if we save this and run it, we'll get m5 n10. And what's going on here is the behavior of the comma operator. So initially M is set to four. This plus equals assignment is going to add one to M. This expression is evaluated first. So M is going to be set to five by the time this expression runs. So at this point, M is five, we have five times two, and the value of this expression is what's actually returned. So we get five times two is 10, and so n is assigned the value 10. So that's why we get m5 and n10 there. So that's how we can use the comma operator where we have some variable actually being modified in the first expression and then used in the second expression there. So we want to be a little bit careful with using the comma operator. It could actually make our code more confusing if we're not careful, but there are some situations where it can be useful. So for example, Let's say we want to compare two numbers and then do a couple assignments based on that. So for example, we've got some number here, maybe it's five. We have some maximum value, maybe it's 10. 
And based on some comparison, we want to do a couple assignments to R1 and R2. We could do it like this. We could say if the number is less than max, then assign to R1, 1, and R2, 2. Otherwise, assign to R1, 3, and R2, 4. And this works. But this is a number of lines here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 lines. We could do it like this. We could say R1 is equal to 1, R2 is equal to 2, and then we would just have else R1 is equal to 3, R2 is equal to 4, and now we've got it down to two lines, and it's doing the same thing. If we print out R1 and R2, we can verify it's going to work correctly. So let's print out R2 here, followed by a new line, and we'll give it a test. So we'll save this and run it. And right now we should get R11, R22, and we do. If we change it so the number exceeded the max like this, we'll get R13, R24. So it works just the same. It's just that it's now down to two lines of code. Another situation where the comma operator can be useful is when initializing variables involved in a for loop, where the one variable's initialization depends on the initialization of the other variable. Let's go over an example of a for loop that works with strings. So we'll include the string.h library that includes the string length function strlen. Then down here, we'll make a string. We'll say car star s1 is equal to a string to print from the middle. And what we're going to do is make a for loop that's going to print this string from the middle. So from the middle point onwards, which should be right here at the t. So we'll say for length is equal to str len s1. So first, we're going to assign to length the string length of s1. How many characters are in s1, not including the null terminator? Then we'll say i is equal to length divided by 2. So i is going to be our counter variable in this loop that we're going to use to print each character from the middle to the end of the string. So we had to first figure out the length before we could figure out where to start i off at. And we're going to use length again, because we're going to check to see when we're going to stop running the loop when we say i is no longer less than the length. So i is going to go up to the length, and that's when it's going to stop. So we're also using this variable here as part of our loop. And we'll increment i to make sure we print out each character from the middle point onwards. So here then we'll just say printf percent %c to print out a character and we'll say s1 at our counter variable i. And i is going to go from that middle point all the way to the end of the string. When we're done, we'll print out a new line as well. So we'll save this and run it. And we get the string printed out from that middle point onwards. And that's an example of where we could use the comma operator to initialize one variable used in a for loop that depends on the initialization of another variable. We could also use the comma operator in a somewhat similar way with an if statement. So for example, let's say we have a string here, s2. And s2 is just some string here. We could say in an if statement, if length is equal to str len s2, so you get the length of s2, and then compare that length to some upper bound, let's say. So is the length less than 20? We'll say 20 is going to be the upper bound. And if it is, we could print out the characters in the string. So for int i is equal to zero, i is less than length, i plus plus, and we'll print out each character in the string s2 from zero up until the length of the string, followed by a new line. And if we save this and run it, s2 does have a length that's less than 20. So we are going to enter into that if statement body, and we'll print out some string. But here we've got a situation where we're evaluating this expression and we're finding that the string length of S2 is something and setting length to that. And then we do a check using that variable here, length, in the second expression right here. And this is the actual return value. So length less than 20, that Boolean, true or false, that's what's going to be returned. And that's what the if is going to use for this condition here. So that's why this works.
Another situation where we could use the comma operator is to return an error value from a function at the same time that we set the global ERR NO variable. So in the library, ERRNO.h, there is this global ERRNO variable that is sometimes set by functions in other libraries or functions that we create to signify that some error has taken place and to describe that error. We can make a function here called check value. And the check value function could check whether the value argument it's given is within an acceptable range. And if it's not, it could return an error value like negative one to signify there was a problem with this function as a return value. At the same time, we could also set the global ERR NO variable. So here we'll say, we're gonna do some work. But at some point, we're gonna to check to see if that value is outside of some acceptable range. And if it is, we're gonna say return ERRNO is equal to EIN val and then negative one. So this EIN val here is a constant defined in the ERRNO.h library, and it stands for error invalid argument. And what we're doing is assigning that to the global ERRNO variable. This variable is something we could look at later and use later to figure out and print out information about exactly which error occurred. Whereas this negative one is a more general error status that our function is going to use as a return value. So that way, whichever function is calling our check value function can determine just based on the return value, whether it worked okay or not. Whereas using this ERR and O variable is more optional. It kind of makes sense to have this on one line because effectively these both have to do with the exit status of the function. So keeping them on one line as opposed to separating them on two actually kind of makes sense in this situation. So here we're gonna return zero, just that way all of our pathways in this function do return an int. And then we'll try the check value function. So down here, we'll say int return value is equal to check value, and we'll call it with 1001. Then we'll check the return value, and we'll check to see what ERR and O is set to. So we'll say printf return value percent D backslash N, and we'll output that return value. And we'll also output something if ERRNO is set to EIN val. And we'll say printf ERRNO set by check value backslash N. And we save this and run it. And we do get a return value of negative one. And we do get that ERRNO was set by check value. So that's another situation where we can use the com operator. Generally speaking, we wanna be careful when using the com operator. It can very easily reduce the readability of our code. But as we've seen in a few special situations, it can actually improve the readability of our code as well. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.